Thanks to the Home Depot for sponsoring today's video. I have the terracotta saucers. So this, however, I want to give it a little bit of a modern flair. So I'm going to be, I always make a bass when I'm caulking. I'm actually going to give this an update, but first. Hi friend, welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy you're here because today I'm creating some more beautiful DIY home decor projects now. It's no surprise that I love DIY, not just for the creative process, but this idea of potentially making something that is unique, maybe even customized for my space, or even like reflect my personality or design interest. So that is what I'm setting out to do today. I also wanna thank the Home Depot for sponsoring today's video. Not only do I get my DIY supplies there, but also some awesome home decor finds that I can't wait to share with you. First, let's get DIYing. Height. It's very important in interior design, not just because we want things to feel balanced, but it can also be a good tool to add some interest to a space, to a vignette. So that's what I want to do for this project. I kind of went down this rabbit hole with pedestal stands. Now I've made a couple here before and I also sell some on my shop. But I went down this rabbit hole with pedestal stands, but not just pedestal stands. Some of these are like sculptural pieces, art pieces, maybe even lamps or tall planters, maybe even a hybrid of some kind. So I want to create my own version of a pedestal stand that maybe is a planter. I'm, I'm not sure yet. Um, I'm actually going to be playing off of this bowl. So this is a wooden bowl that I actually thrifted a while ago. It was like five bucks solid wood. So I made my way over to the Home Depot to pick up some supplies and kind of try to puzzle things together. And this is one of those projects where once I start putting things together, I think that's going to guide the DIY outcome. Okay, so this is our eight inch form tube right here. And I have the terracotta saucer. So this is the 12 inch one. I'm going to flip it upside down. Also going to take the 10 inch one, flip it upside down, put it onto the other one. Now for the top, I went back and forth what I wanted to add, whether I wanted to add more detail or not. I'm going to keep it simple and just put the wooden bowl on top. I could potentially drill a hole in the bowl and like sort of make it more of a base or something like that. But I think this is the direction I'm going to go in. I kind of like the size of that, so I'm just going to keep it the full length, which I believe is 48 inches, so four feet. Um, so before I glue this down, I want to go ahead and take this outside and sand the bowl down because actually, yeah, I'm just going to go scuff it up. Oh, sanding, one of my favorite activities in the world. <laughs> but I th was definitely necessary for this bowl because I really want the cement skim coat to adhere to this really strongly. But now that I took care of that, it's time to assemble it, put it all together. So I'm just gonna adhere everything with Gorilla Glue. I don't want any glue dripping. So after setting it all down, I give it a quick wipe down with a damp paper towel. The larger two. I'm gonna put some glue um, and then we'll add some weight at the top to like clamp it down basically. Okay, to finish this up, I will be now gluing the bowl on top of that. And then setting some heavy books on top to clamp it down. Now I'm just going to follow the instructions on the glue and let it sit or cure for at least 24 hours. But first, did you know the Home Depot sells home decor? Yes. I've been wanting one of these for a while now. Any guesses? Now, as we all know, the Home Depot is a trusted brand for home improvement, DIY supplies, and all those things. I get lots of my stuff there, as you already know. But they also offer an assortment of on-trend home decor pieces and appliances for every style. Probably one of the best kept secrets, but the Home Depot has an amazing selection of home decor online. Last year, I ordered this floor lamp and cabinet. I still love them. As I build this cabinet, I'll let you know that I can spend hours on their website looking for furniture, lighting, decor dupes, seriously, so many gems, which by the way, I was very happy with the prompt delivery service and the Home Depot offers free delivery on orders over 45 and flexible returns, which is amazing. 
Okay, this cabinet is perfect. Of course, be a great sort of kitchen island for extra storage. I plan to use this as a supply cabinet to hold sort of my DIY supplies and things like that. There's ample storage. I could easily move this around, around the house, into the garage, what have you. So this is really wonderful. I can't wait to start organizing it. Ooh, DIY on the go. Oh yes. What I love about the Home Depot is that they carry quality furniture and decor, different brands, different price points, and they also carry kitchen appliances. I'm so excited for this. So this is an air fryer toaster oven, which I actually love these things for like baking smaller portions. Perfect for like reheating food or I like to roast veggies. So I also like this thing attachment. So like can easily take the pan out. Genius. I love making sandwiches. And this is probably one of my favorite finds that I've ordered from the Home Depot recently. And it is a bread machine by Hamilton Beach. Now I've heard of bread machines before. Never really knew how they worked. Never owned one. Literally, this was the easiest thing in the world. So after giving it a quick clean, put in all the ingredients, push the button, and that's it. It did all the magic for me. Like my mind is blown. I can't wait to use this regularly. And it was at a really great price point, even more now with the President's Day sale, which is about to end March 1st, 60% off. Yes, 60% off select furniture and home decor run. So click on the link down in the description box and take advantage of the President's Day sale at the Home Depot. Literally, it's about to end, I think March 1st. So jump on that, go take a browse. So many amazing selections of furniture, decor, and all that. I just want to thank the Home Depot for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so it's actually pretty stable and I'm not afraid of it tipping over. I think it's great. Next up, let's go ahead and do some uh, cement skim coating because I want to make this look uniform and like not a whole bunch of things glued together, you know? Before I give this a cement skim coat, I'm going to go in with some of this caulking to kind of fill in some of the gaps, especially where like the tube meets the bowl. And then down here, it's just a little detail, but it's going to give it a more polished, seamless look. And this is ready to paint in 30 minutes, so I might be able to apply the skim coat today. Looking back on this, it's actually quite satisfying seeing the gaps being filled with the caulking and stuff. But one thing about me is that I do not like caulking. It's not my favorite activity in the world. I'd rather sand. Like, I'm not even kidding. Actually, no, that's kind of crazy thing to say, but it's necessary. Look at that. It just fills in the gaps. It looks seamless. It looks like one solid monolithic piece. I always make a bass when I'm caulking. And this one is no exception. Honestly, I just gave the caulking about 24 hours to fully dry just to be safe. But now it's time for our favorite part. You guessed it. It's time for my friend Henry's Feather Finish. Pick this up from Home Depot. And this thing is so amazing. I use this, of course, a lot in my projects. I will be using this to skim coat the entire thing. So I'm just following the instructions of this. Adding a little bit more water than suggested, but I want this to be spreadable or yeah, spreadable with a brush. I would normally use a trowel, but a brush is easier for the curves of this sculpture. following day, I gave it a second coat. For this product, it's typically recommended to do various lighter coats. Um, so that is what I'm trying to do here. Actually, I ended up only doing two coats, but a third one would even be better. It looks great. So last night I gave it the second skim coat of the cement and it did a great job of covering everything like the seams and all that. So I'm not going to do a third coat in this case. Now this is a really good piece as is. However, I want to give it a little bit of a modern flair. So I'm going to be adding some pattern to the column portion and hopefully it looks good. Let's let's hope. Um, and it's just going to I think it's going to make it a little bit more interesting as well. 
now here's something that did not go as planned and that was i was going to stamp on sort of like a checkered pattern so this is kind of interesting because on one hand it's like a furniture piece uh meant to function as something but at the same time i kind of want it to be like an artistic piece how do i blend that together my solution to paint some stripes on it and give it some artistic expression for the eyes who see it, or at the very least, adds cohesion to the entire piece. Not just make it like a solid cement sort of column looking thing, but more of an artistic piece, something that has a little bit of personality. So here I'm just taking some painter's tape and honestly just eyeballing this and making it striped. As I was taping this up, in my mind, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with the base. I could either leave it the cement color or I could paint it the same color as the stripes. In the end, I decided to paint it the same color as the stripes. I think that was the right move. Now, obviously, I went with black paint here. Maybe I was inspired by my shorts or something, but I'm just a fan of sort of black and white contrast. It's classic, it's timeless, and it's bold. Now, this color is not white, it's cement, but paired with the black, I think it's I think it's going to work well together. Also, note that I really watered down the acrylic paint just to make it feel more of a stain. I didn't let the cement soak it up too long either as I went in with a damp paper cloth and kind of wiped it off. Okay, so I knew when I was going to do some stripes on here that there was going to be a lot of bleed through because cement is very porous, but that's actually the effect that I'm going for here. It's just, I just want it to be imperfect. However, I want to add, I think a little bit of white over this, like a white wash so that it feels a little bit more aged, maybe a tiny bit of brown in there as well, but I'm so happy with the results so far. Just like the black paint, I really watered down this white acrylic paint to make it serve as like a whitewash. I just let it sit for a couple of seconds before wiping it down with a white paper towel. There are a couple different avenues when it comes to styling a piece like this, but for now what comes to mind is to add some flowers, tulips specifically, for a touch of elegance. I know this might be an odd decor piece, but I'm here to experiment and this is what I came up with. So I have a little bit of sad news actually. I had to take down uh, an old video for some reasons and in that video there was some DOI projects that I think turned out really nicely including this uh, table lamp, this pottery table lamp. I'm actually going to give this an update but first let me show you how I came together with this because let me tell you this did not look like this when I got this lamp. As a refresher, this is the vintage table lamp that I sourced for this project. Looking back, it's actually quite beautiful. I don't know why I transformed it in the first place, but I did, so here's what I'm gonna do. My initial inspiration for this project were these vintage style pottery lamps, which are so beautiful. So notice that some of them have some handles. So I went ahead and created some handles using some oven baked clay. I essentially cut three strips. If I were to do this again though, I probably would do four, but I cut three strips of the clay and kind of just laying it onto the table lamp, trying to figure out what design, what curve I like best. And this is the one that I ultimately went with. Per clay instructions, I placed this on a baking sheet and into the oven it went for, I don't know however long it asked. 
Upon cooling down, it's time to adhere the table lamps to the handles. Or the handles to the table lamp, I should say. I did scuff them up just a bit for a better fit, I would say. Using some E6000 was the best solution in this particular case and secured them in place with some masking tape for the time being. I just honestly left them overnight. And for the moment of truth, it's time to remove the tape. I was a little bit nervous, honestly, but they were on there nice and secure. Now it is time to transform the table lamp, make it look like pottery via cement. Of course, I'm using Henry's Feather Finish that I picked up from Home Depot. Per usual, adding some water. This water's looking a little sus though. Like the color's a little off, don't you think? Anyways, I added some color pigment to add a warm undertone. I layered several coats of this skim coat using a brush, allowing each coat to dry. Now notice with the first coat, it's looking a little transparent, but I find it to become more opaque once it dries. As a quick reminder, this is what the final table lamp looked like. It might become familiar now. I even love the shade that I added, and it does look in a sense like pottery, don't you think? You know, it's great, but I want to give it an update. Looking back at the inspirational photos, these table lamps look more authentic. I think it might be just the distressing on them or something, maybe even the handles. So I'm going to try my best to give this a refresh with some paint. Here I'm using acrylic paint, some white paint to start off with. Really watered down. I don't want it to be too opaque. I want it to sort of serve as, again, a whitewash in a sense. For the second paint color, I opted for this sort of rusty orange color. However, I decided to go away from it and opted for this beige color. I think this is not only going to add sort of that patina element effect that I'm going for, but also preserve the warm quality of this pottery lamp. I want it to feel warm. At this point, I'm pretty content with how this table lamp is turning out. I allowed it to dry, I took a step back, looked at it, and I determined I like it. So this is the final result of the table lamp. I reapplied that same lampshade, the empire shade, and you know what? I think this looks much better. But let me know, do you like this updated version or the previous iteration? Okay, let me know which project was your favorite. I had a lot of fun making them, but I still don't know what to call that tall column pedestal stand sculpture. I don't know, what, what would you call it? Anyways, thanks again so much for watching. Also, thanks to The Home Depot for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out their President's Day sale, which is about to end. Click on that link in the description. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out my other suggested videos here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.